Welcome to testpassport.com. In this video, I will share real AS 101 questions and answers with you, which is the replacement test of 70 to 533 exam. 1. You have 5 Azure virtual machines that run Windows Server 2016. The virtual machines are configured as web servers. You have an Azure load balancer named LB1 that provides load balancing services for the virtual machines. You need to ensure that visitors are serviced by the same web server for each request. What should you configure? A. Floating IP direct server return to disabled. B. Session persistence to client IP. C. A health probe D. Session persistence to none Answer. B. 2. You have an Azure subscription that contains a policy-based virtual network gateway named GW1 and a virtual network named VNet1. You need to ensure that you can configure a point-to-site connection from VNet1 to an on-premises computer. Which two actions should you perform? Each correct answer presents part of the solution. A. Reset GW1. B. Add a service endpoint to VNet1. C. Add a connection to GW1. D. Add a public IP address space to VNet1. E. Delete GW1. F. Create a root based virtual network gateway. Answer, E F. 3. You are the global administrator for an Azure Active Directory Azure AD tenant named adatum.com. From the Azure Active Directory blade, you assign the conditional access administrator role to a user named admin1. You need to ensure that admin1 has just-in-time access as a conditional access administrator. What should you do next? A. Enable Azure AD Multi-Factor Authentication MFA. B. Set Admin 1 as eligible for the Privileged Role Administrator role. C. Set Admin 1 as eligible for the Conditional Access Administrator role. D. Enable Azure AD Identity Protection. Answer, A. 4. You are the global administrator for an Azure directory Azure AD, tenant named adatum.com. You need to enable two-step verification for Azure users, what should you do? A. Create a single sign-in risk policy in Azure AD Identity Protection. B. Enable Azure AD Privilege Identity Management. C. Create and configure the Identity Hub. D. Configure a security policy in Azure Security Center. Answer, A. 5. You have an Azure subscription named Subscription 1 that contains an Azure virtual machine named VM1. VM1 is in a resource group named RG1. VM1 runs services that will be used to deploy resources to RG1. You need to ensure that a service running on VM1 can manage the resources in RG1 by using the identity of VM1. What should you do first? A. From the Azure portal, modify the access control IAM settings of VM1. B. From the Azure portal, modify the policies settings of RG1. C. From the Azure portal, modify the value of the managed service identity option for VM1. D. From the Azure portal, modify the access control IAM settings of RG1. Answer, C. 6. You are configuring Azure Active Directory AD Privileged Identity Management. You need to provide a user named Admin1 with red access to a resource group named RG1 for only one month. The user role must be assigned immediately. What should you do? A. Assign an active role. B. Assign an eligible role. 
c. Assign a permanently active role. d. Create a custom role and a conditional access policy. Answer b. 7. You have an Azure Active Directory Azure AD tenant named Tenant1 and an Azure subscription named Subscription1. You enable Azure AD Privileged Identity Management, you need to secure the members of the Lab Creator role. The solution must ensure that the Lab Creators request access when they create labs. What should you do first? A. From Azure AD Privileged Identity Management, edit the role settings for Lab Creator. B. From Subscription 1, edit the members of the Lab Creator role. C. From Azure AD Identity Protection, create a user risk policy. D. From Azure AD Privileged Identity Management, discover the Azure resources of Subscription 1. Answer, A. 8. You create an Azure subscription that is associated to a basic Azure Active Directory Azure AD tenant. You need to receive an email notification when any user activates an administrative role. What should you do? A. Purchase Azure AD Premium P2 and configure Azure AD Privilege Identity Management. B. Purchase Enterprise Mobility Plus Security E3 and configure conditional access policies. C. Purchase Enterprise Mobility Plus Security E5 and create a custom alert rule in Azure Security Center. D. Purchase Azure AD Premium P1 and enable Azure AD Identity Protection. Answer, A. 9. You have an Azure Active Directory Azure AD tenant. You have an existing Azure AD conditional access policy named Policy 1. Policy 1 enforces the use of Azure AD joined devices when members of the Global Administrators Group authenticate to Azure AD from untrusted locations. You need to ensure that members of the Global Administrators Group will also be forced to use multi factor authentication when authenticating from untrusted locations. What should you do? A. From the multi-factor authentication page, modify the service settings. B. From the multi-factor authentication page, modify the user settings. C. From the Azure portal, modify grant control of policy 1. D. From the Azure portal, modify session control of policy 1. Answer, C. 10. You enable multi-factor authentication for all users. Some users report that the email applications on their mobile device cannot connect to their Microsoft Exchange Online mailbox. The users can access Exchange Online by using a web browser and from Microsoft Outlook 2016 on their computer. You need to ensure that the users can use the email applications on their mobile device. What should you instruct the users to do? A. Enable self-service password reset. B. Create an app password. C. Reset the Azure Active Directory Azure AD password. D. Reinstall the Microsoft Authenticator app. Answer, uh. 